Hello, we are back in Scrap Mechanic today. Moving on from last build, we built uh, we built a chariot, a, a horse-drawn chariot, and had a race with Pixel last time. And we're moving a little bit more into the future, and we are working on a SRV. And the SRV is from Elite Dangerous. This is the one that you would be kind of traveling around planet side with, and it's called the Scarab uh, because it has kind of a, the basic shape of, of, of a scarab. It looks rather beetle-like, and uh, hopefully you guys kind of enjoy this process. The cockpit is kind of unique on this thing. We have kind of these two rings that go around the seat. Uh, usually, of course, it's gonna be covered with glass and all of that kind of stuff, but obviously, with such a complicated shape, I can't really put glass into it. Um, there'll be a lot of you know gaps and just a lot of ugly pieces to it so I figured it'd be best to just leave it open canopy and kind of deal with it as it goes um, but to get this ring what I did is essentially adjusted things to be 30 degrees ink 30 degrees and then uh, using a combination of three long blocks and four long blocks uh, alternating we were able to get a ring to kind of wrap around the structure. Now, we kind of run into some problems with this because the way the the bearings work in Scrap Mechanic is that when I pick it up on the lift to go work on other areas, all the bearings will flatten out. And that's gonna be a problem because the, bear, the, the canopy will actually start hitting the back end of the scarab and get stuck and really cause some issues for us. So, Obviously, what's going to happen is sirens are going to happen outside, interrupting my video, as always, but we'll just ignore that and keep going like nothing ever happened. Anyway, so the, the problem with that, of course, is the canopy will no longer be able to close if it's hitting uh, the main body. So, um, here, obviously, I'm like, okay, I need to test out this ring, and you can see it kind of partially closing, not closing all the way. So you, you know, I have to think and redo all this stuff. And it's pretty funny at this stage when, when you take it off the lift, it, it closes all at once and kind of clamps down like a like a clamshell. And it's pretty funny to watch. So what I'm going to do to fix that is that I'm going to have the canopy roll out forward rather than being it split left and right. And in doing so, that'll allow kind of the back end to basically not interfere with the canopy itself. So it was a little bit of a tiring process messing with all these bearings. I mean, I think there's about 11 bearings per side uh, of the canopy here. And it, it's it, it just very time consuming in this case. Now, luckily the Scarab itself is a relatively simple vehicle, um, you know, kind of long, narrow legs, you know, it, it's a really light SRV, and so everything else after the cockpit kind of came together relatively quick. Uh, here, you know, laying out the front legs. The front legs are a bit special. The Scarab technically has the power to, like, fold up into a smaller package so you can store it into your ship. Um, that's not a feature we're going to have, but maybe if enough people wanted to, I, I could maybe edit it to where it can but I don't know how well that'll go over with, with all the bearings and everything holding weight. But essentially the front legs, uh, they'll fold down in front of you and they are rather close to the body and they hang out forward uh, in front of the canopy itself where you're sitting. And at the end of the, everything, when we're actually driving the thing around, you guys will notice that if you maybe look in Elite Dangerous in the game, and then compare it to what you're seeing in the cockpit here. It's it feels relatively similar, and so I'm really happy. Eventually, that gets all straightened out. Um, but the how I'm handling the leg is that I have to angle it, and then angle it away from the body the first junction, and then we're going to have to angle it to bring it in line with the body, uh, because obviously where it's connecting is behind the canopy, so I have to get it to wrap around the canopy. And then also angle it at about a 15 degree angle downwards to kind of give us some more springs. There's actually a lot more suspension in this vehicle than what I normally build. Um, so like when I normally build a car, you know, I have 
one suspension per wheel. And so this, this is actually a lot more. Um, so per set of wheels, we're gonna have a suspension. But then also that bar has a su suspension up near the body as well, giving us basically a double kind of suspension system that will allow us to climb over rough terrain relatively at ease, which is really nice. Building these kind of long arms out from each other um, looks really weird when it's on the lift because everything's all flattened out. And then, and then it just kind of rolls up into a ball as you uh, put it down and you unhook it from everything. It's, it's, it's quite, it's just funny. It's, it's just this weird kind of build process that isn't like anything else in most uh, creative games. You have these two states, the, the uh, idle state and then like in the actual game with physics state. Um, and it's unlike anything else uh, that I know of in creative games at this moment. So the back end, relatively simple. It's going to kind of go up about halfway up the cab and then give us the full length. Here I'm just testing kind of the power of the front wheels to see if it's good enough to get us going. It's kind of long, uh, the back end. I think it's about 50% to 60% of the total length of the vehicle. So luckily I was able to capture that. It's a relatively boxy back end here though. There are some little areas where the armor juts out. And the cool thing is in the game, it has this kind of mesh this black mesh material that is enveloping parts of the body and then you can see this kind of white metallic underneath of it and so I'm trying to capture that there using the eye beams with the crossbars in them just to try and uh, bring in some some layers that you're actually seeing into as it is a relatively simple shape uh, of a body beyond just the front end here we're adding the center lights, which are a little bit of a challenge because if I make them too wide, it won't look good. It, the vehicle itself will just start looking weird because it has all these spindly legs, which is a problem in itself, but it becomes rather uh, obvious and more noticeable if you make the center legs way too long. And so the first couple attempts, I definitely made them too long. You can see that, I mean, it, it's, it's basically tripling the width of the vehicle and so I end up cutting them off, reworking them, shortening them up, uh, making them a little bit more stiff and they're basically just there so I don't flip. Um, the other forward legs and back legs are our turning legs and so they actually move a whole bunch while we're driving around. It can be a major problem as it, it, it can look a little weird sometimes because some of the bearings just they don't hold together very well here testing uh, just again just the speed and how it's overall performing at this point noticing the middle wheels are actually higher up than the front wheels causing the vehicle kind of to lean backwards which is next something I want so I had to rebuild the middle wheels yet again and get their length to at least somewhat match the front end and I think this is kind of the final uh, design that I came up with a relatively simple uh, pipe with these arching kind of limbs hanging down there and now they would be even with the front there but there's just so much weight in the back so it's kind of causing this, this cockeyed effect to uh, happen and now we're just gonna move to the back wheels, which are basically smaller versions of the front wheels. So they're going to have those two bends in it, uh, even though it's kind of unnecessary, but they need to match the front wheels just so uh, it drives better. But they're just not as long. Um, there is a bit of a problem with that. Because they're not as long, when we turn, we don't have quite the, the width to keep us stable. And so what will happen is it's relatively easy to flip if you're just not paying attention and just holding down uh, left or right, you'll just flip the thing. And then eventually, you know, we'll paint it up. We'll add uh, some thrusters just for luck. Uh, the Scarabs do have thruster capabilities. In fact, every single wheel should have a thruster on it. Uh, and also the body has two thrusters on it. And this, this will allow the Scarab technically and the Elite Dangerous to kind of hop 
uh, float, help it land, and then also help it maintain grip on low gravity planets because obviously the gravity is not going to help out at all, so it's going to have these kind of reverse thrusters. Obviously, these back legs at this point here is just too long. It looks really weird. It looks uh, almost like a spider, which is not really what it should look like. It should look more like a beetle. And so shortening uh, those back legs by about half really helps with that. And so I'll be doing that here in a second after more testing because performance testing is, is very important as it also helps with design decisions. And um, obviously this part is just going to go through rather quickly as it's just a lot of driving around, seeing how the suspension reacts to certain scenarios. And you can see these are actually shorter than, actually not shorter, a little bit longer than the middle wheels. Uh, but when they're actually folded back like that, it looks relatively nice, you know. Um, kind of wish I could throw some armor plating on these legs, maybe bulk them up a little bit, but in Elite Dangerous, I mean, they're very spindly, uh, you know, very utilitarian. They're not, it's, it's not a fighting vehicle. It has the capabilities to do it, but it's not really uh, something I would suggest doing in mass, uh, unless you're raiding a base or something like that. And then, of course, more testing. I'm trying to go over these hills as much as possible, as it is a vehicle definitely made to go over those kind of stuff. And eventually, maybe uh, when we're driving around here in a second, We'll, we'll drive over some rocks and hopefully test out the suspension in that case because I haven't tested that yet and hopefully you guys uh, will be impressed or very disappointed. Anyways, let's go ahead and cut to current me. So here we are with the finished and painted up scarab. Um, I think it turned out really well. We have a nice kind of black and really light gray paint job on the thing and it it resembles in my opinion close enough to what you would see in the game and so to me it's very recognizable in fact it also reminds me of the base runner that we built not too long ago in space engineers which is a wonderful build that we did for quite a while so if you guys haven't seen that i would recommend checking that out of course here are other vehicles very similar to the tachikoma over there um but obviously a little bit bigger and just a little bit more uh I guess believable sci-fi in my opinion it's, it's definitely a little bit more utilitarian so we'll go ahead and hop in now the back end here should be housing a turret um, but I don't really have one in this and then also it can store about one ton of cargo it's a relatively big vehicle um, we are using the new kind of a motorcycle or ATV kind of cockpit and we'll go ahead and look in first person view. Plenty of headroom here. I really like being able to see the tires in the front. It looks really cool when you're moving. It actually looks a lot like Elite Dangerous in my opinion, having you know played that for a while. It feels, in it's, it's just, the, the way it traverses over terrain, it feels like I'm kind of playing Elite Dangerous and on like a, about a half G kind of moon or something and we'll go ahead and zoom out so you guys can see kind of the suspension in action and it's a very smooth ride you can see the cab is actually not bouncing moving uh, doing anything crazy at all I hooked up the little thrusters on the side to our turning mechanism just to give some some visual movement to the build um, See if we can't make it through this forest. The side wheels can be a little bit of a problem in these type of areas. But it's not too bad. I mean, since we have front and back steering, our turn radius is fairly good for the size of our vehicle. And because we have quite the good suspension uh, going up and down hills, doesn't really affect uh, if n anything at all. Uh, so let's go ahead. Take it down here, and let's head towards the, the middle of the map a little bit. We are flipping, and there we go. Okay. Yeah, just had to be a little light on the turns. Um, this is going to be the last vehicle we make on this map. As you can see, the FPS is rather low, and I do apologize for that. 
but I want to try and get as many vehicles on each map as possible just for the ease of of basically me knowing what's in what save. I can't really start a new save for everything that I make. I, I would clutter up my, uh, my desktop a little too much. So let's go ahead and see if we can't make it over some rocks. Now obviously it's, it's, the suspension is going to act a little weird in areas, but oh boy, we're stuck. Oh, wait, nope. There we go. Get some tires up on that thing. Come on, you can make it. Oh yeah. No, this thing is great. Um, I mean, definitely the best thing that I built so far that can go over kind of terrain like that. I don't think that went too bad at all for kind of a first attempt. As I drive it more, I'm sure, you know, I would understand kind of its limitations a little bit better. We do have one button and it does activate the thrusters in the back. It's kind of more like a stability control thing. Um, and they're set up to basically turn opposite of what I'm turning. So if I turn right, um, the thrusters will kind of stick up and try and keep us planted and help if we start to tip over, I can turn the opposite direction and use the thrusters to kind of tilt us back in the other way. So I think that turned out all right. They're relatively small thrusters. Obviously this thing should be able to hover a little bit, fly, and oh god i broke the leg come on come back into line there we go um yeah anyways it should be able to fly a little bit you know and hover but just the thrusters in this game aren't powerful enough to do that anyways i think that's going to be it for us and the scare build um i might end up releasing this save file for you guys so you guys can put around and uh yeah thank you guys so much for watching if you all enjoyed the episode Feel free to subscribe for more creative goodness such as this. Go ahead and leave a comment down below on what you want to see built next. Uh, go ahead and check out my other videos if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you guys in some more Scrap Mechanics soon.